So this video is to show you how to work a problem at the hard level of AC node equations tutorial. As always, we could look at examples first. However, I'm just going to go straight to the problem since this is very similar to the DC node equations tutorial. So as always, the first step here is to place a ground or reference node. And it's always a good idea to have that connected to at least one voltage source. So in this case, I'm going to place it over here. And that's done. And now um, we simply need to write the various types of equations. Since we do have voltage sources in this problem, we will need to use voltage constraint equations. So let's do those first, as those are relatively simple. So looking first at the V1S source, we know that that constrains the voltage V3 with respect to V4. So that's going to be a difference of voltages is equal to the value of that source. And the difference is going to be the positive voltage minus the negative voltage. So it's going to be V3 minus V4. And that will simply be the value of that source V1S, which we found find down here below as 7 angle 0. Now, if for some reason you wanted to write this as V4 minus V3, you could do that if you either put a minus sign here or if you change the 0 to be 180 degrees, because 1 angle 180 degrees is the same thing as negative 1 when you're dealing with complex numbers. But there's no real reason to do that here, so I won't. OK, now for V2S, um, we have a source that's connected to ground on one side, so that'll just determine one node voltage. And that will be equal to the value of that source. And since it's the positive side that's connected to V2, we just have V2 as opposed to negative V2. And now we put in the value of V2S, which is 2 angle 105 degrees. Since the plus side is connected to V2, the negative side is connected to ground. Now we'll do the SOT variable equations. And one thing to note here is that in the AC tutorial, um, there are no problems involving SOT powers. That's because uh, power in AC circuits is actually a complicated uh, subject in its own right. Um, and there will be a special tutorial eventually to address that. So that's not covered in this tutorial. OK, so in this case, we have a SOT voltage. So we're going to pick SOT branch voltage here as the type of equation. And V0 now will simply be, let's see, V0 is located here. So we see that that's actually going to be a difference of two node voltages. So we'll use this term. And the positive side is on node 4, and the negative side is on node 5. So that will simply be V4 minus V5. So that's our SOT variable equation. And now we'll write a KCL equations for each of the non-reference nodes, um, or supernodes in some cases. So let's do it first for node 1. So we'll select KCL equation. And we see we have one current that goes directly to ground through a resistor or, well, any impedance would be the same, but in this case it happens to be a resistor. And then another one that goes to a different non-reference node, so we need this type of term, and that's going to be equal to zero. So we can write that V1, oh, V1 um, divided by uh, 2 ohms, that's this current going up here. And then this would be V1 minus V2 um, divided by J4 ohms, which is the impedance of an inductor. Remember that inductors always have impedances that are positive imaginary numbers, whereas capacitors always have impedances that are negative imaginary numbers. That's a good thing to remember because it can help you check that you're not making a mistake. Okay, that equation is correct. Now let's look at node 2 and say, well, we could try to write a KCL equation there. But the problem, of course, is that node 2 has a voltage source connected to it. And remember that the current through a voltage source is whatever it needs to be. And we really have no way of determining right now what that is. Therefore, we're not going to try to write a KCL equation for that. And because that voltage source goes to ground, this is really part of what we might consider the reference supernode. And we don't need to write uh, a KCL equation for the reference supernode, because that would be redundant to all of our other equations and would just give us too many equations to solve. So we're going to simply skip node 2. There's no need to do that because we do have the uh, voltage constraint equation for node 2. So now we're going to go to node 3. And we notice that, once again, it's connected to a voltage source. But now, because reference, uh, the other side of the voltage source is not ground, we do need to form a, a non-reference supernode, if you will, uh, consisting of nodes 3 and 4, which are connected by the voltage source. So basically, we're going to draw a 
surface, a closed surface, around both of those nodes. And then we're going to add all the currents that exit that closed surface, which is a direct application of Kirchhoff's current law. And that will avoid the need to know the current through the voltage source, which again is whatever it needs to be. So this is just a way of, of bypassing a need to know the current through a voltage source, which can be difficult to determine. So when we make that a super node now, we're going to have a current exiting through 7 ohms, through J1, through minus J7, and then through minus J5. Um, all of those go to non-reference nodes, so we're going to need a total of four terms of that type, and that's all going to sum to zero. So first we'll have node uh, V3 minus V2 divided by the 7 ohms. That's the current going down here. And then we'll have V3 minus V5 divided by the negative J7 ohms. That's the current going up here. Then on this side, we have V4 minus uh, V2 divided by J1 ohms. That's the current going down through the inductor, which is, as I mentioned before, has a positive imaginary impedance. And then this last current is going to be uh, V4 minus V5 divided by the capacitive impedance, which is negative J5 ohms. Now remember that those impedances, that these values here, are only valid at one specific frequency, which um, has not actually been specified here as we're not going to need it. Okay, so we'll check that equation, and that was valid for this supernode, and of course node 4 was part of that supernode, so we've already taken care of that. And the last thing we need to worry about then is node 5. So node 5 is going to have a current source current and then two capacitor currents. So we'll have this term and this and this, since neither of those uh, elements here are connected to ground, and that will sum to be 0 by KCL. So the current through the current source is just the value of I1S, since that current source is pointing out of the node. That, in fact, is a current that leaves the node. So that will just be this value of 3 angle 180 degrees. Or equivalently, that's negative 3, but I'm just going to write it this way. And then the uh, current that comes uh, down here is going to be V5 minus V3 divided by negative J7 ohms. And lastly, the current going to the right through the negative J5, that's going to be V5 minus V4 divided by that impedance, which is negative J5 ohms. And we'll check that. And, um, and hopefully you know by now that J here does stand for the square root of negative 1, just like I, in, uh, which is the notation normally used by mathematicians and physicists. Um, but the J, of course, is always the square root of, of negative 1 here, just as a reminder. Okay, um, we've done all the necessary equations, so now we just click No More Equations. And we have the option of viewing a more detailed explanation, but I'm going to skip that for now. Thank you.